Good evening and welcome everyone to our college fair tonight. My name is Jay and I am your StriveScan facilitator for the evening. Welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We have amazing schools here for you tonight that are gonna tell you all about what they have to offer. Now, just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Now, you should be able to see a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. That Q&A button is for you to reach out to us and any of our panelists can see the questions at any time. They can answer your questions and reply right back to you. But don't worry, your camera and audio, your video, all of that is off. So you can see us, but we cannot see you. And then this is just one of many different sessions. So if you wanna learn about more great schools besides the awesome ones you're gonna hear about tonight, we totally recommend that you sign up for more sessions with the Minnesota Association College Admission Counseling Fair. Also, this presentation is being recorded. So within about one week, you will be able to review this recording at strivescan.com forward slash Minnesota. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and bring up our first college of the evening, Central Lakes College. Go ahead and take it away for us. Welcome everybody. My name is Tamber Garza and I am the Director of Admissions at Central Lakes College. Um, Central Lakes College is a two-year community and technical college located, uh, we have two locations, one in Brainerd, Minnesota and one in Staples, Minnesota. Um, many people in the area or in Minnesota and the surrounding areas are familiar with the Brainerd Lakes area. We have a lot of um, tourists in the summer, golfing, camping, resorts, all that kind of fun stuff. So um, I know there are a few people that do come to the area a lot more. Um, so I just wanted to highlight our uh, website here, clcmn.edu, and talk about anything that students, prospective students need to know about enrolling that they can find under this Enroll Now tab. And what I wanna do today is kind of just go through a little bit um, of our Central Lakes College view book to give you a little bit of indication about what type of school we are. And we can find that right here on this link right here. Um, so we are a two-year community and technical college. And what does really that mean to students? Um, we have two, basically two different types of students. Um, one, one type of our students, they know that they want to transfer on to a four-year degree. And so they start that four-year degree at CLC uh, with smaller class sizes, um, lower tuition. It's just a great opportunity for students to get their feet wet, to kind of learn how college is about, and then being able to transfer um, to a four-year college. Many of our partnerships, because we're within the Minnesota State System, uh, we'll have that automatic transfer to the four-year Minnesota State Universities, but many of our colleges, including the ones you'll see here, um, is ones that our Central Lakes College students do transfer to. Um, so this kind of talks a little bit about our transfer degrees and our transfer pathways. One awesome thing about CLC that we offer our AA students is going to be a zero textbook cost degree. Our students can strategically play strategically take classes in the transfer degree and go for zero textbook costs. Um, so textbooks can be a barrier for students and anybody out there can know that you, some students may pay up to six, seven, eight hundred dollars a semester for that. So um, the point of this is to keep that, those prices down and not have that be a barrier for our students. And so they use online resources in doing that. But literally, they can take the entire degree for zero textbook cost. So that's kind of half of our students. The other half of our students, they know that um, they want some more education, but maybe they don't want to go to school for four years or more. They want to pursue maybe a one-year program, a two-year program. And so these programs are going to allow students to learn a skill and go to work. They're going to get that training um, at CLC. Maybe they want to be a welder. Maybe they want to be, um, we have a videography major, a two-year criminal justice, nursing, um, <clears throat> diesel, auto mechanics, we have heavy equipment. There's a lot of really great 
um, programs out there that students can pursue with a one or a two year education and come out with some really good paying jobs. Trades are making the world go around right now. Um, we see that in this COVID, in this COVID time. Um, so there's some great opportunities. Students are walking out the door making $50,000, $60,000 a year sometimes. There's companies out there just vying for them. Um, so just know that whether you're a student um, and, and maybe you struggle with some of that stuff. So we kind of have the best of both worlds at CLC and that's something that's pretty unique to us. The other thing I kind of want to talk about real quick before my six minutes is up is just the steps to enrollment. Um, I encourage you if you have any interest in CLC to kind of take a look at this, take a look at our website and see where we're at. Um, but then if you are by any chance interested in CLC, these are going to be our steps to enrollment. Um, first, students need to apply. They can apply right on our website. Applications take about 15 minutes. We do have a free application. So students are not owed any money if they're applying to multiple schools, um, which sometimes also can be a barrier for students. So filling out the application gets your name in and gets going. If students are interested in trades, especially for this fall, I would highly encourage a student to transfer, I'm sorry, to apply as soon as possible um, because our programs do fill up. Um, students do not need to have an ACT or anything to get into CLC. Um, any of those scores we use for course placement, it's not based on admission. Um, so depending upon what a student's major is, we will look at ACT, SAT scores, um, high school transcripts, things like that. Um, but really that's for establishing the course placements. Um, financial aid, you need to go to any school. I will say that CLC does not have a deadline for financial aid. Um, sometimes students don't decide to come to CLC until June or July, and that's okay. I never want to tell somebody to wait till the very last minute, but it is okay if that happens, if they make a change in that, um, in their decision-making process, there's still time, um, there's still time to be able to get in there. Is my time up? <laughs> You're getting Sorry, close. Too. Come on and wrap it up. Um, and then really we register for courses. Um, and so uh, that's gonna start in the next month is our students are gonna start registering for fall. But what I really wanna tell people is that it's okay. I know a lot of maybe seniors out there haven't quite made a decision yet. There's still plenty of time. CLC welcomes that. Um, we don't have a deadline for application. We don't have a deadline for financial aid and we really do kind of have something for everyone. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely, we are gonna move along to our second presenter. Beautiful, and Co-College, you are up. All right, hello everybody. I am going to move this to presentation mode so you can see the, the entire slide. I'm Mo Mose. I am the Associate Director of Admission and Regional Counselor for CO. I live in the Twin Cities, actually, so I'm very accessible, although that's a different kind of thing during this COVID time. Normally, I'm out meeting with people and having coffee dates with uh, students and families, but um, hopefully by next fall. Uh, CO College, for those of you who don't know about CO, is about four and a half hours south uh, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We're a 1,400-student, highly residential, four-year private liberal arts college. Wow, that's kind of a mouthful. Um, so I would say, you know, just to put us into context um, and compare us to schools that you might be familiar with in uh, the Twin Cities area, maybe like a Hamlin, Augsburg, um, Gustavus, St. Olaf, um, that type of school uh, is what CO is all about. Um, we are in, in, as I said, Cedar Rapids. Um, Cedar Rapids is, again, about four and a half hours driving from the Twin Cities. We're about three and a half hours from uh, Chicago, uh, four and a half to five hours from Kansas City, St. Louis. We're really in a nice central uh, location to lots of urban areas for um, just weekend trips or internships, um, work after you finish uh, at Co. Um, but the, the neat thing about Cedar Rapids is it's about 250,000 people. Um, it's the second largest city in Iowa. About 40 to 50% of our alumni base lives right in Cedar Rapids. Uh, so that really feeds into a lot of what I wanna make sure and highlight tonight 
that Co is ranked um, always in the last three, four years in the top 25 in the country for internships. So we really leverage our alumni base that's in Cedar Rapids. So many of our um, students choose to stay in Cedar Rapids uh, after their time at Co because they like it so well, or they get a job from an internship. Um, we are known for our income mobility, which uh, just means you're able to um, increase your salary over time in the Cedar Rapids area. 100% um, of our students do do an internship or some sort of off-campus study or research, some sort of experiential learning, which is kind of the buzzword these days. Um, Cedar Rapids itself has two teaching hospitals. So um, some of the most popular majors at CO are the sciences for sure. In fact, chemistry and physics, those two majors have the distinction of being able to say that we have not had a graduate from either of those majors have to pay for graduate school since the 1980s. All of our students in chemistry and physics and many in biology have been fully funded to go on for graduate school. And a lot of that's because of the research they're able to do at Co. In the summertime, we're fully funded for summer research by the National Science Foundation. Um, their resumes really look like they have already been in grad school for a year or two because of the amount of research they're able to do. So the sciences, psychology, English, business, and uh, education, those are all really popular majors at CO. Um, and they all have lots of opportunity within the city of Cedar Rapids uh, for part-time work, internships, things like that. Um, again, networking, um, which I've already kind of talked about, but we do a lot with the area, both alumni and other folks that work in uh, industry in Cedar Rapids and in, in the healthcare industry and other fields. Um, we do lots of mentorship pairing. We have um, SIP and socialize uh, networking events in our alumni house on a regular basis where students get the chance to really find out what it's like to be um, out in the working world and, and net, do some of that networking. So we're big on outcomes at uh, Co College. We really want you to be able to, to feel like you're getting um, a valuable education at Co. 40% um, of our students will double major and still graduate in four years. So great advising, that's the key to being able to finish in four years is to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with your faculty so that you can plan out your time at Co. Um, we also offer lots of off-campus opportunities. We have a New York term, we have a Washington DC term, and then lots of opportunities in other countries, um, Thailand, Vietnam, China, Japan, Korea, um, European countries. We're part of a consortium of schools that also includes Carleton, McAllister, St. Olaf, many others that we share um, study abroad programs with. Uh, so fantastic opportunities for that. 100% um, of our graduates within a year are either employed or in graduate school. That's again, the outcomes. We really want you to feel like you're getting uh, value at Co. Um, so I just wanna make sure you know about our uh, decision, our application programs, regular decision um, for seniors this year was March 1st, but we're still accepting applications. So by all means, if you're still looking, still hunting for a school, come on in and apply at Co. Um, juniors will be able to start applying over the summer. And then the FAFSA, our average financial aid uh, package last year was $47,000. We cost just under $60,000. So a lot of our students are paying in that $13,000 to $15,000 range for a four-year private education. These are some of the um, uh, dates that you should have in mind. Uh, we have lots of visits happening. We are open for on-campus visits. I'm going to put in the chat area or the Q&A area, um, a link to our visit program uh, page so you can sign up there. So I just want to say thank you and come and visit us. We would love to have you on campus. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Thanks so much there. Really appreciate you being here. We are going to move along to our third presenter of the evening, which is Concordia University. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate it. We've got Jay with an E, we've got Tambra, we've got Mo. Can't wait to see what this next guy's name is. I'm sure it's super cool. Oh, it's just Drew, just regular Drew. Hope he has a great personality. <laughs> I'm gonna assume that the audience is roaring with laughter right now and that this isn't a tough crowd. 
Welcome everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Drew. I'm from Concordia University here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, we're located right here in the middle of the Twin Cities between Minneapolis and St. Paul. I've just got some slides. I'm super excited to share a little bit about CSP with all of you. Uh, our traditional undergrad student body. We have about 1,700 students at CSP, so we're a small private school. Uh, our average class size is only about 14 students, so we really value uh, students getting a small class experience at CSP. Our most popular majors, what a lot of students come to CSP for is business and biology and education. Our nursing program is only a few years old and is really getting very popular the last few years. Uh, some that aren't listed, we have criminal justice, um, as well as fine arts, performing arts, music and theater are very popular, graphic design and studio art. We have over 70 majors. So if you wanna see if Concordia has something you're interested in studying, go to our website and check them out. Uh, there's so many more I could talk about. We're a test optional school. We have been for the last few years. This is our mascot, by the way, Comet the Golden Bear, letting you know that when you apply to CSP, you don't have to send in your ACT or SAT scores. I really like that. I would rather look at four years worth of data anyway on a student than like four hours, right? When you woke up at like six in the morning, nobody's at their best. So I really appreciate this policy. And I, I think it makes it easier for students to apply and get accepted. It streamlines the whole process. Speaking of streamlining, uh, I'm sure a lot of you out there have already been working on college credit while you're in high school. You're earning AP credit or you're taking CLEP exams or maybe you're just taking college classes while you're in high school. Uh, we accept all of that. We let students transfer in up to 90 credits toward their degree. We're a very transfer friendly school. So whether you're coming in straight out of high school or maybe you've gone to a two year school like you've already heard about, and then you wanna transfer and finish uh, a four year degree at Concordia, we're really open to that. And we have a lot of students every year that come and do that at CSB. Yeah, this is good. Some changes that we made this past year due to COVID, um, obviously a lot changed, but because we're a smaller school and have those smaller class sizes, we actually didn't have to cancel in-person classes. Our students were able to stay in class all year. Our students were able to still live on campus all of this past year. I think they're very thankful that they've been able to sort of preserve a more normal college experience. Uh, and we just got the word last week that we are going fully open this coming fall as well. So even some of those clubs and organizations and programs and events that had to get canceled, um, sporting events, we are NCAA Division II, we're bringing all of that back this fall. So really, really excited um, that we're doing that. But we have virtual visit options. If you want to take a virtual tour of campus, you can do that on our website. You can do an hour long virtual tour, or you can watch like a five minute super speed tour um, whatever you want to do, we have all that available, or you could come and take a tour in person if you're here in the Twin Cities. Speaking of our campus, there's always a lot to do for our students. I mentioned clubs and organizations. We have uh, almost 100 clubs and orgs now, I think, on campus. Fine arts, I mentioned those before, too. Uh, awesome performances get put on all throughout the year. I'm really excited to bring those back starting this fall as well. And then, yeah, Division II, we're the only private university here in the Twin Cities that's also NCAA Division II. So we have a football team and a basketball team and a volleyball team, all of them very good. Our volleyball team has won nine national championships in the last 13 years. So pretty high quality stuff, always a lot of fun. And all of our students go to all of these events for free, of course. Uh, tuition, cost, I think this is a big one. And I think every rep here would tell you that uh, they want students to make really wise decisions when it comes to money and where you go to school and making a good investment in yourself. So Concordia prides itself on being the most affordable private school here in the Twin Cities. Our tuition is a little over $23,000 next year. Um, we try really hard to keep it low because we want students to be able to experience a small school, a private school, feel uh, maybe without paying typical private school prices to go somewhere. So with that in mind, I also wanted to share some of our scholarships with you guys too. So we give out academic scholarships based on your high school GPA that go from 1000 up to $10,000 per year. Uh, once you're accepted, you're going to get one of those scholarships and you'll get it every year for four years based on your high school GPA. So if you're a junior or a senior and you still have time to boost your GPA, here's your motivation 
whatever you do to boost your GPA now is just going to earn you more free money when you apply and get accepted to a school. So I know that's what everybody wants to hear. Hard work literally pays off. So don't forget that. And if you want to find out more about CSP, go to our website, csp.edu. If you want to do one of those virtual tours or watch, you know, a virtual video, I actually am in some of those videos. So if you want to get some more of me, I don't know why you would go to our visit page as well. And if you want to follow us on Instagram or join our Facebook group, um, we do a bunch of posting on social media so our incoming freshmen can start to get connected. So yeah, find us at CSP Admissions uh, on either of those locations. Jay, I was really considering just telling the audience that I was going to ramble and force you to yank me, but I'm not going to put you through that. I'll just quit now. I appreciate your time, Drew. Thank you so much. We're going to move along right on to the second half of our evening here with Goldsmiths University of London. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Will. I am the International Officer for Goldsmiths University of London. We are going to jump across the pond to your favorite formerly European country of the United Kingdom. Um, I'm based in Brooklyn, New York. As you can tell in my accent, I'm not British, famously. Um, so uh, I'm based here and on your time zone, sort of. So I'm always happy to help. We were founded in 1891 and we are part of University of London. And as a constituent college of the university, um, we are a medium sized college, about 10,000 students on our campus, extremely diverse and international. We are among the top 60 international universities in the world. Um, more than half our students are students of color. We have a very sizable LGBTQ plus population on our campus. Uh, many first-generation students, uh, nearly half of our students are first-generation, and also plenty of Americans running around campus, so you won't be totally alone while you are at Goldsmiths. Our student-faculty ratio is 14 to 1 as well, and we have no lecture halls on campus, so you're going to be very used to small lectures, seminars, and workshops. We have also implemented a Green New Deal on our campus, and we are committing to carbon neutrality by 2025. Um, we're hoping our students can definitely get on board in fighting the climate crisis. Here's a bird's eye view of our campus. You'll notice that uh, all of your courses will be held inside this yellow dotted line here. We are a single site campus with residence halls located both on and just off our campus. We also have an underground station literally next to campus at New Cross Gate, and that will get you right into the center of the city in about 10 minutes. So while we are in a neighborhood a little outside of the center, um, it's a bit quieter, but still very urban. As you can tell, we have a movie theater on campus, a public museum, a 24-7 library, um, tons of cafes, restaurants, coffee shops, um, music venues, art galleries. It's really an amazing city to study. London has about 12 million people. There's always something to do. If you're a sports fan, you can definitely get involved in the Premier League. Um, we also have tons of sports on campus. You can play other London universities competitively. Um, there's really something for everyone. It's, it's a massive metropolis, the economic, cultural, and political capital of the UK, and also sort of wider Europe. Our academics focus mainly on the arts and humanities and social sciences. We are a specialist comprehensive university. We are in the top 100 in the world for um, those fields. We also have nine subjects that are in the top 100 in the world, eight of which are in the top 50. Uh, those include the ones listed here. I will note our communications and media program, which is famous for its screen school and journalism school. Um, that's number seven in the world and number one in the UK. It's the largest communications and media department in Europe. We also are very well known for our art and design programs. Uh, we have the most Turner Prize winners of any school in the United Kingdom. Um, that's the most prestigious art prize in the UK. We're also very well known for our undergraduate research. We're number 21 in the UK for the quality and international significance of our research and undergraduate students are expected to undertake research from year one. Here's a non-exhaustive list of our academic programs. We have around 75 undergraduate majors uh, at our school. You can also do joint honors programs, which can combine two of these that are sort of like subjects, for instance, anthropology, sociology, history and journalism, et cetera. I'm gonna briefly describe the UK education system. Uh, we have three-year bachelor degrees in the UK. So um, we're, 
you know, it's, it's much quicker to get your degree. It's also cheaper um, shaving a year off of school. As such, we also have no core curriculum or general education requirements. So if you're, you know, really sick of math and never want to look at numbers again, uh, if you take an English degree, you'll never have to do, do a math class. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different from what you might be used to. We are not liberal arts schools in the UK. Um, we also do have a post-study work visa, which will allow you to remain in country for up to two years after you graduate. So if you are looking to perhaps permanently immigrate, um, that is a good pathway to do so. Our admissions requirements are quite simple. We require a 3.0 unweighted GPA to apply. We are test optional for this year and next year. So any current juniors and seniors would not require test scores, but I have included them uh, on here for any uh, sophomores or freshmen in the room. The application is through UCAS, which is the affectionate name for the University and College Application Service. This is very similar to the common app, but this is the aggregate application for all universities in Britain. The application opens each year on the 1st of September and closes for priority deadline on 15th of January, um, but we do have rolling admission until 30th of June for most programs. The website will be updated for each university as programs close for entry. You can only pick up to five universities or programs to apply to in the UK, um, and we make our uh, entry requirements very clear for that reason. You'll notice that a lot of UK schools, even some of the most prestigious ones, have very high acceptance rates. Um, so it's a little bit different from what you might be used to. Regarding cost, uh, tuition ranges from about 16,000 to 23,000 uh, pounds, translated to around 20,000 to 27,000 US dollars, depending on the program. We do offer international scholarships for students, and we do accept federal loans and um, Parent PLUS loans. And um, very briefly, our accommodation is uh, located both on and off campus in mixed gender housing and suite style housing. And we do guarantee accommodation for you in the first year. Um, it's suite style. So um, you'll have your own room with your own bathroom though, which is very nice and a little bit unheard of, I think for most American students. Um, so thank you so much. And our uh, website and social media links are here. And my email address is also on the screen in case you have any questions moving forward. Cheers. Awesome, thank you so much, Will. We are gonna move on to our fifth presenter of the evening, Northern State University. Tyler, take us away. Oop, you're muted. Sorry about that. Thanks there everybody. We go. Uh, my name is Tyler Holland. Um, I'm with Northern State University uh, in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Um, and let me share this here real fast. Awesome. And then, sweet. Uh, all right, so um, yeah, as I said, uh, I'm with Northern State University. Um, we are in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Aberdeen has about 28,000 people. Uh, Northern has about 3,000 students. Um, so again, it's a small community, a small campus. Um, a student faculty ratio is about 18 to one. Um, so we like to keep the class sizes small. Um, we, uh, uh, yeah, uh, all the professors are super helpful. They're always, uh, you know, willing to, um, you know, talk to you after class, everything like that. So, um, we do have 59 majors, um, that is spread out across, uh, we have, let me think four different colleges. Um, so we have the school of ed, uh, the school of business, the college of arts and sciences and the, uh, school of fine arts. So. Um, you will be able to find a major anywhere in between those. Um, a lot of our big majors, so elementary education is a big one for us, uh, has been since we started. So uh, biology and chemistry, they are, uh, they're very, um, very much coming up in, in the top of the, uh, uh, the majors and everything. A lot of people are, uh, I'll touch on the, the science center later on, but a lot of people are really excited about the science center as well. So um, and yeah, we offer study abroad, um, internships basically uh, with anything that you want to do there. Um, and then yeah, our biology and chemistry students um, all have the opportunity to do undergraduate research while they're there as well. Um, yeah, tuition for Minnesota or for Minnesota residents at Northern State University. Um, we are very inexpensive. So um, 
Yeah, only about 18,000 per year. Um, we also offer the Wolfpack scholarship. So that ranges anywhere from $4,000 to $12,000, depending on your ACT score and your uh, GPA. So we look for a 3.25 GPA uh, in a 20 ACT uh, in order to qualify for the Wolfpack. But then um, obviously the higher you get, uh, the more money you can get. So, and then, yeah, most of our students, about 80% of our students receive some type of financial aid. Uh, so I wanted to show you some cool things that we got on campus right now. Um, we just put up three brand new residence halls that we're super happy about. The, uh, so the one on the left, um, that is Great Plains East. Uh, that is going to be more of a pod style uh, living situation. Uh, Wolves Memorial Suites and then Great Plains West is the uh, third edition. Uh, those are both going to be suites. Uh, we also just put up some new uh, athletic and recreation fields. So um, soccer and football will practice there, but that's a lot uh, where a lot of the intramurals are going to take place. Um, definitely uh, look into, you know, checking out the intramurals and everything too. So um, we just put up this new science center. We're very happy about it. Um, as I was saying before, so the biology students are going to be on the, on the bottom floor, chemistry students up top. Um, there's plenty of spaces to, uh, to study, you know, kind of work on big projects together, everything like that. Um, and also this wolf that we put out in front uh, was done by an alumni. Um, so I thought that was really cool. It's a, it's a super cool wolf. Um, so for anybody who's interested in like special education, um, we, we just uh, built this brand new school for the blind and visually impaired. Um, and so that is for any special education student who is looking to have the opportunity to work with students with disabilities firsthand prior to, uh, you know, getting a job, um, you know, they'd be able to, to do that there. Um, we're also putting up a brand new uh, football stadium and a softball complex. Um, those should be done by the fall uh, and, you know, for, uh, for our football team to, to start playing on this fall. So we're excited about that. So, um, yeah, just real quick, I kind of wanted to cover uh, a few more things. Um, uh, for the admission steps, uh, basically what you would do is obviously you would apply for admission. Um, we need your high school transcript uh, and then any ACT or SAT scores that you have. Uh, we're looking for at least a 2.6 GPA uh, in 18 on the ACT uh, or higher uh, or place in the top 60% of your class. So you can do one of the three and you'll get it uh, accepted into Northern State University. Uh, and then after that, we would register you for classes. So um, other than that, uh, the other update that we have is that uh, uh, obviously we have athletics at Northern State U University. Uh, we are division two and uh, uh, part of the NSIC. So there's a lot of area schools part of the NSIC, but, uh, but Northern State University uh, is the, uh, the men's basketball team is the uh, NSIC champs for four years running. So we're very excited about that too, but um, but yeah, um, anything else uh, that you may need, feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to help. Awesome, thank you so much, Tyler. We are gonna move along to our last and final presentation of the evening with University of Wisconsin-Madison. All right, thank you. And hello, everyone. Get started, just pull something up here. Awesome, so hello everyone. My name is Michael Rakowski. I'm a freshman admissions counselor here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'm excited to be with you here with you all tonight and share a little bit more about what we have to offer. So, so we are the flagship public university in Wisconsin uh, and we've been around for over 150 years. Our total student body consists of around 45,000 students with just over 30,000 of those being undergraduate we welcome students from over 120 different countries uh, and all around the world <clears throat> and all 50 states in the US. About 10% of our undergraduate students do come from Minnesota. So while there'll be folks from all over, uh, we're a very popular option for Minnesota students as well. You might be wondering what's special about UW-Madison or what sets us apart. And I think that the biggest thing that sets us apart is our guiding principle, which is called the Wisconsin idea. And we've been committed to this principle for over 100 years. And essentially, it says that the benefit of the university should extend beyond the walls of the classroom uh, to benefit the lives of everyone across the state, the country, and even around the world. This has created a culture of public service and activism on our campus. And we stand out in areas such as research, leadership, and public service. Uh, we're actually the number one producer of Peace Corps volunteers, which I think is a 
great fact that demonstrates just how dedicated to uh, global service our students are. We offer 125 different majors and over 70 certificates. Uh, and what our certificates are, are similar to a minor at a, uh, what some other institutions might call it. We call them certificates. Uh, and we have eight different schools and colleges. Each school and college has their own advising resources. Um, so you're always working with some specialized faculty and staff there. I encourage you to check out our website and explore some of our programs. We really do have a lot of programs, uh, really something for everyone. Along with those everyday academics uh, and involvement in those social activities, uh, these are some of the opportunities that you can look forward to having as part of your Wisconsin experience. Most students will engage with at least one of these opportunities, if not multiple of them. We have a variety of study abroad opportunities for all different majors. Uh, we actually rank as the number one university for sending students on those semester long study abroad opportunities. We also have some shorter ones as short as a couple weeks and some longer ones as long as a year. Uh, students can also engage in research as early as their first year. In addition, many students complete internships or co-ops before graduation. For some majors and programs, they're required and they're built into the program. Uh, many of our students, even those who aren't required to do so, um, also complete some. And we also offer residential learning communities and first year interest groups where students with similar interests can build community and more connections with faculty. Uh, I can't talk about UW-Madison without talking about the city of Madison, Wisconsin. Perhaps some of you are familiar with the city of Madison. Maybe some of you have never ventured across the border over here to the Badger State to check out Madison. Uh, but we are the capital city of the state of Wisconsin. And in this aerial photo, you can actually see the dome of the Capitol building right in the center. Madison sits on what is called an isthmus, which is a narrow strip of land surrounded by two bodies of water. Uh, the two lakes we have are called Lake Mendota and Lake Monona. Uh, we are also only the most recent inhabitants of this land, and I want to acknowledge that. But our area has a rich history, which includes the Ho-Chunk Nation, who have occupied this land for thousands of years, and still do, and call it Dejope, which means four lakes, named for the four lakes in the area. I love the city of Madison because you really get the best of both worlds. It feels like you're in a bigger city with lots of events and culture and food, uh, while also being just steps away from the lake. We have tons of hiking and biking trails and many other fun outdoor activities year-round. If you're interested in applying, you can submit an application using either the common application or the UW system application. Either one's fine with us. As part of the application, you will submit your grades and coursework, which can be through a transcript or you can self-report it, uh, as well as involvement and submit two short essays. We also ask for one letter of recommendation from an academic source. Typically that's coming from a teacher or counselor. Uh, also, we are currently test optional right now through spring of 2023. After that, we're still waiting to hear uh, whether or not we'll continue to be test optional. But this means you don't have to submit an ACT or an SAT score if you don't have one or if you don't want to. And students won't be disadvantaged in any way if they choose not to submit a score. But for those who feel strongly that they would like a test score considered, we can use it as an additional piece of information in our review. We have two deadline options for all of our fall applicants. Our early action deadline, which is November 1st, is non-binding. So that means even if you apply early, you have until May 1st to make your decision on whether or not you wanna attend UW-Madison, uh, regardless of when you apply. After we've received all your application materials, we will begin what we call our holistic review process. Uh, we utilize a holistic admission review, which means that we review every aspect of every application. We don't have any cutoffs or formulas to determine admission. We put the most emphasis on academic excellence, which to us means that we're looking for students who are progressing to some of the most rigorous courses available to them, and then performing well in those, typically earning A's and B's. We also consider lots of non-academic factors, including involvement, leadership experience, part-time jobs, volunteer work, and of course, those essays. Also want to quickly touch on financing your education because I know paying for your education is an important part of the decision process. It's important to understand that the cost of attendance will vary from student to student based on a variety of factors. But one of the amazing benefits of coming to UW-Madison from Minnesota is our Minnesota-Wisconsin reciprocity agreement, which means that the tuition rate you'll pay uh, as a Minnesota student is very similar to an in-state tuition rate. In addition, you can apply for a variety of scholarships that are offered through our Wisconsin Scholarship Hub. And students may also qualify for need-based aid, 
uh, which is determined by filling out the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Uh, we do have need-based aid packages for Minnesota residents that can cover up to the full cost of attendance for students who qualify. That's all the information I have for you right now, but our conversation doesn't have to end here, so please be in touch. If you have any additional questions, uh, we have a variety of virtual events on our website too, so I recommend checking those out. And thanks so much for listening. I hope you learned something new about UW-Madison. Thank you so much. I'm gonna ask now for all of my presenters to bring their screens back on because I've got a question for you all here. Let me get my screen shared up. And so we're gonna go in the same order that we went tonight, but what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Central Lakes College, what do you have to say here? Uh, my advice uh, for someone is you can do all the research you want, go visit the school. How is that school gonna make you feel? Until you walk in the door and you surround yourself with that surrounding and the people that are there, um, it, it, I feel that that's, it's a little more difficult. So go to the school, see what you can find, see how that school makes you feel. Awesome, great. Co College, what do you have to add? Um, I definitely say the same thing. Uh, visiting and doing a, either a virtual visit right now, um, which is the right thing for some people, um, or going uh, and doing an in-person visit. But, one little tip that I'll give, and I have two daughters, one that graduated from college and one that's in college. And this is the advice I gave them is to keep a little notebook with you just, just for your college visits. And this can be for virtual and in person. Um, the more colleges you visit, the more it kind of runs together. Um, you start forgetting what little things you liked about each college. So just take some notes um, the day of your visit about the way it made you feel, the people you talked with, and that way you'll have that to refer back to when you're later in your search process. Great advice there. And Concordia University, what do you have to add now? Yeah, I would echo both of those and also tell students, ask the people that you trust in your life for advice, especially people in your life that went to college, ask them what they think you should do and also ask them what they wish they would have known or what they wish they would have done. I think that's a great way to get good advice in your life as well. Beautiful, excellent. And Goldsmiths University, what do you have to say here? Um, yeah, I think, you know, for students who are looking to perhaps have a bit of adventure, uh, obviously looking international is a great option, but it's not realistic for everyone. So I think just exploring some study abroad options, even maybe, you know, a couple weeks over the summer with the faculty led program, there's a ton of options that a lot of universities even tonight mentioned um, that they offer. So I think just kind of getting out there and experiencing something else other than what you're used to is really important. Absolutely, gotta explore what's going on. Northern State University, what do you have to say here? Yeah, um, obviously definitely visit the colleges uh, that you're interested in. Um, one thing I'll say is while you're there, make sure you have that financial aid talk. Um, make sure that you know how much uh, you know school is going to cost, how much financial aid you could potentially could get, um, what all your options are there. Um, it, I think it'll make everyone kind of feel co more comfortable about uh, the entire college search process. So uh, that's my advice. Awesome. Great. And let's close it out here with University of Wisconsin. Sure. So much good advice coming from all my colleagues here, but I will add, I always recommend not making the college decision based on a single factor. So uh, try not to get excited about one single academic program or one aspect about campus you love, really considering the whole picture about each of the campuses you're considering. Great, awesome. Well, we are gonna close out here tonight then. And I just wanna say thank you all so much for being here. All of our attendees that were here live, we are so happy you were here. And if you missed it live and are watching in the recording, we are happy you joined us in here too. Thank you so much to all of our panelists. And if your questions weren't answered, our panelists will get a transcript of the questions here so they can follow up, but hopefully you've gotten their contact information as well. When you close this window, just know there will be a four question survey. It is pretty short, but we at StriveScan would love your feedback. Also, this was just one of many sessions. So please register for additional ones later tonight and tomorrow. And in about one week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other sessions recordings that you may have registered for at strivescan.com forward slash Minnesota. Thank you all and have a wonderful evening.